Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about creating a custom calendar. And the reason I decided to put this together is because there are times where in this digital age we know we can get calendars on our phones and laptops and tablets and things of that sort. But sometimes you want to have a calendar that's printable that you can tack on to your refrigerator so that all members of your family can see what kind of upcoming events are going to happen in a given month. And so I put together this file where you can create your own custom calendar. And as you can see on screen, I have a calendar that's designed for a church organization. And different kinds of nonprofits and philanthropy organizations, things of that sort that have a lot of events during a month, might be able to be advantaged by having such a can calendar. As you can see, I have a graphic image up here, and this is an image that can be changed. I have the month and the year here. I have some identifying information at the top along with a URL for the organization for which the calendar is created. And then I have different fields here that are text or graphic fields. And at the top you can see I've got a G and a T here. Uh, the G is for a graphic and T is for text. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to import a button face, an icon, you can import that like I have several here, these different graphics that are imported. And then I have just text fields. At the bottom over here, we've got the Create Calendar button, and I'll explain that momentarily when we take a look at the file that I'll upload to my server to help you out. I have a Reset Calendar button, which is going to clear out all the fields and let you start a new calendar. And on the right side, I have over here this button that will show a help document that uh, is going to give you the leap years all the way up through the year 2100. So if you click on this you can see these are all the leap years in the event that you create a calendar and you need to know whether February has 28 or 29 days in the month. Okay and then if I click this button that says hide I'll hide that. And then I have a print button and in this print button I hide all of these buttons because they're not necessary when the calendar is printed as well as these G's and T's that you see through here which are just buttons that will change between graphics and text. Okay, so let me go back now and show you the file that I'm going to upload to my server. You'll find this file in the description below this video. And this is where we start to create our calendar. First, I'm going to click on this button that says Create Calendar down at the bottom. And I'm prompted in an application response dialog box to submit the year. So let's say I want to go 2025. I'll click OK. And then it asks me what month. And let's say we want to go to uh, January. Okay, and then you need to know what day the month starts. Let's say it's a Sunday. It may not be Sunday for this particular month in the year, but uh, you can get that from a regular calendar. So when I click OK, then you can see that the dates are all populated all the way from January 1 through the 31st. At this point, I have a button here and it says January just as a default this button appears with all the months names and it's designed for you to import an image so if I click on this this is an image field I, I'm going to go to browse and I have a file here called church this is the church and I'll click OK there and that graphic appears as you see here. These fields are open fields for you to submit identifying information and then at the bottom a URL. And then I have graphics and text. So let's say I want a graphic here. I click on G and click on a button. Once again I'll go to browse and let's say it's bingo night here. I've got a graphic for that. And I'll click OK. And then the other buttons here, the defaults are text. So I can type in uh, 
a worship session 7 to 9 p.m. something like that or whatever you want to type in those fields so each one of these fields now can be populated you can leave uh, days blank if there are no activities and you can just go through and submit images or create text to describe activities and this is just beautiful for children's soccer games and, and different events the family may attend that throughout the month it can be printed posted on your refrigerator all the family can see and you can prepare for days ahead where you have an event occurring on a specific day to reset the calendar, I simply click the button here, it's clean, and then I can start a new calendar. Once again, application response, let's say I want to go March, oops, I go to year first, let's go 2025. The month will go March, and the day of the month, let's say it's uh, Friday. Once again, I get that from a real calendar. Click OK, and you can see now my days are populated for the month of March. And you'll notice that the overflow over here goes into a second field for these last few items at the very last row here on the left side. In the event that a month starts on a Friday or a Saturday and uh, you have a month that goes 30, 31 days, you need some extra fields down here. So that's about it. This file, once again, it's uploaded to my server you can feel free to distribute it to any clubs or organizations you belong to. This document can be completed in Adobe Reader as well as Adobe Acrobat. So it can be freely distributed to all Adobe Reader users who need to create their own calendars or to organizations who want to submit a calendar to individuals within their group. So. That takes care of it. Once again, this is Ted Padova wishing you all the very best in all your acrobat activity. And until we meet again, bye-bye.